Good morning. I hope everyone's doing okay today. Today is um, March the 29th, Sunday, of course, Sunday morning, and uh, most of you are typically used to finding things and uh, on our YouTube channel and, and preaching. And of course, today just a little bit different. Uh, first, I just want to say I'm excited, so thankful for everything. That's how it's begun uh, for how the Lord's doing. I know that uh, many carry heavy hearts as we all are, but I thank the Lord for God's faithfulness and His goodness. And I don't want to be long-winded. I really just want to dive right into the point. Of course, we have so much to be able to pray for, but considering all the people that will be watching this on our YouTube channel, I don't want to share all the um, all of our uh, church business um, on all that uh, is just facing different battles. But let's continue to be able to pray for one another, no matter what church you're from. Uh, many uh, pastors that are in this area, uh, churches that are in this area, let's pray for everyone today. Uh, the Lord has been so gracious and so kind to be able to show His love and His mercy through everyone, and I thank the Lord for that personally. So uh, this morning, just want to start, and uh, really we're going to be in Matthew uh, chapter number 11 uh, today, be able to uh, share just a few things that the Lord's really not just put on my heart, but uh, has uh, helped me tremendously as well, uh, and I'm so thankful for that. So uh, Matthew chapter number 11 is where we're going to be this morning before we begin, let's begin with a word of prayer, uh, and then we'll dive into reading the scripture. Our Father, Lord, I thank you, and Lord, I thank you for another day, and Lord, I thank you, Lord, just for, um, God, your goodness and your mercy, and a chance to be able to open up the word, and, and Lord, to be, uh, Lord, a child of God, to be able to know that, uh, Father, we're saved, and no matter what happens in this life, that God, everything uh, is is under your hand uh, and in your hand. Father, I thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. Lord, I pray all across this globe today as people uh, gather together, Lord, that we just lift up Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Lord, thank you for giving your son down across for our sin. Many that are sick and afflicted, uh, Lord, I pray, God, that you strengthen them and touch them, that your will and your way would be done. Uh, God, that's what we desire. Lord, for every pastor, every preacher, every Sunday school teacher, every person who serves today, Father, I pray that you give them strength, uh, Lord, for every local church. Uh, God, may you touch them and help them uh, encourage your people, Lord, not because of changing things, but, but Lord, because we, we get our eyes set on you. Lord, that's what we need. So, Father, I love you, and I pray that you just use this time that we have this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Matthew chapter number 11 this morning, uh, start reading. Uh, if we could, uh, we're going to look down a very familiar portion of Scripture, but uh, I would like to start, if we could, in verse number 25. In Matthew chapter number 11, the Bible says this, it says, And at that time, Jesus answered and said, Now, typically what kind of Bible you have will determine the words, the lettering, the color. Those are black words. From this point forward to the end of this chapter, uh, it is found all in the letters of red, understanding that these are the words of Christ. Very significant as we read that. Jesus speaks and he says, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, hast revealed them unto babes. Boy, what a blessing that is to be able to think how many things that God is constantly and always dealing with and people that are wise and, and know so many different things, educated, but yet the word of God, as Jesus speaks, he says that this is, revealed unto them that are babes. I thank God for that because that's that's me. That's where I am. Longing and learning, listening for the Lord Jesus. Said, even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me. All ye that labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. If you notice throughout the scripture, you go back and forth as Jesus begins to speak. It is amazing how God, as he's talking, Jesus is going back and forth between the disciples, he's speaking to the disciples that are here and he's speaking back and forth from the disciples to the Father. And I think that's so amazing because it's showing that 
there is a walk that's here that where he is so close to the Father that there's a conversation that is back and forth. They ought to be able to teach us that that's the way that we ought to be able to walk, that every single day that we ought to be so close that no matter who we're talking to or what we're doing, what we're interacting in uh, within this life, that we're so close to the Lord that there's an open conversation. There's a constant dependency upon him. But he goes back and forth between these and then he comes to the probably the, the most interesting and really the encouraging place to me and where I really want to focus at this morning. That's verses 28 and 29. And he says in these words, he says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden. He's not talking to Father. He's not talking to God. He's talking to the disciples. He's talking to the others. And he says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lonely, and ye shall find rest for your souls. Notice when he says, he says that you're going to find rest, and he don't say rest for your body. He says rest for your soul. He don't say rest just for somebody who's weary and ran wide open and done a lot of different things and been busy and all the schedule that's going on. That's not what he says. He says that you might find rest for your soul. You've got to a place to where not just you, but even I have got so guilty of filling our schedule with so many different things. Not just with the worldly things and not just with things of work and obligations and schools and activities and leisure and programs and different things like that, but even within churches. I know I can confess this morning and be able to say that even myself as a pastor, as a Christian, that I have found myself being busy, busy doing things that sometimes are a good idea for me that I think that is great for us, for our congregation, for other people to be able to keep us involved. And sometimes we stretch ourselves so thin that we get our eyes off the Lord and we find ourselves being weary. And what happens is we're not just weary in our physical state, but we're weary in our spiritual state. And the reason is because we're doing things that sometimes we choose to do or others want us to do or the demands of life puts on us. Jesus says that I'll give you rest for your soul. Isn't that what we long for today? Isn't that what we long for, what I long for, what so many of us long for to be able to have a rest for our soul? There's a lot of things that can rob us of, of a rest, make us very restless. If you turn back into the word of God, there's a few things in scripture I'll share it with you briefly this morning. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter number 57, reading in verse number 21, we always quote this verse many a times and it says, there is no peace saith God, saith my God to the wicked. But you gotta go right back to verse number 20 and you gotta hear what it says there, he says, but the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest for whose waters cast up mire and dirt. And what it's saying here is that there is a, a restlessness that's there that's back and forth. It's like we're being tossed. And the reason is, is because it's sin that is in people's lives. If you've ever been to the ocean or you've been to a, a, a lake or a river or anything, and it just seems like, uh, up on the bottom side of these waters are going back and it's the mud is being turned and different things. And, and that's what it's saying that for the wicked, that there is sin and that sin that comes in, it brings restlessness. Now I understand that a lot of times we don't want to admit that we have sin in our life. Of course, maybe not open sin, maybe so, but I would dare say lack of faith and sometimes anger and wrath and anxiety, worry, so many different things. And what happens is the sin just begins to make us so restless. It's turning, it's back and forth the same way that the current would be on the bottom side. And that's why we long for rest because our soul gets so weary. And sometimes we don't want to admit it, but it's the truth. It's the reason why we face these things. And I wonder today if there's anyone that maybe because of something that's going on, maybe something in life that's caused you to be able to act in fear and not faith, Maybe there's just something that's in your life that is an underlining sin, something that nobody knows. Maybe just you and the Lord knows, but you're finding yourself so restless, so anxious, so worried, so overcome to where you can't even sleep at night. There's things that happen. Maybe even throughout the day, you find yourself being bogged down, if you will, and overwhelmed. And that restlessness is because of different sin. If you go back a little bit further in the same book of the Bible in the Old Testament, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 30, verse number 15, if you listen here, 
He says this restlessness can come. Notice he said, for thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, listen, in returning and rest shall be, shall ye be saved. And quietness and in confidence shall be your strength and ye would not. How do you get rest? You don't get it just by manufacturing. You don't get rest just because that's just something that you do. You, you find rest in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the scripture is, is teaching us that, that we, we, we don't have rest that's, that, that's of the Lord that's in this world. This is only a rest that can be found in returning to God and finding our right place and walking with him every single day. And I'm reminded about Matthew 11 as we'll return there in a moment is, is that what we long for? Come unto me, all ye who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Is the reason why we're so restless because we're trying to manufacture this rest. We're trying to be able to help us to be able to have peace, trying to be able to get everything settled in our life because that's what we love and that's what we long for and that's what we desire. We, we don't like the, the undertow. We don't like the, uh, the turning back and forth and the, the mud and the mire and the thick of everything. We like it where it's smooth and it's settled. Here we find that the only way to be able to find rest is returning to the Lord. Probably one of the most famous verses that many of us quote at different times, of course, at camp meetings or different things. A lot of you folks have always heard Jeremiah chapter number six, verse number 16, seen on banners, camp meetings and things and talking about um, old time ways and, and you know religion and old, uh, old, old time religion and and following the paths and all these things and, and, and not changing that, I, I, I believe. But, but there's something so much more, please listen, that is so much more significant, so much more meaning than just an, an old path. These old paths where old men of God and ladies have, have walked with the Lord, that those that had a prayer closet, those that, that knew how to be able to touch heaven and, and have heaven touch earth, is not just because it was an old path, it was because they understood the principle of walking with the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to Jeremiah 6.16 6, and is it in its entirety, if you will. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? Sometimes we stop there. It goes further and it says, and walk therein and listen to these words. Ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Why walk in the old paths? Why draw close to the Lord? Why, why should we be able to find ourselves walking with God and, and get back to the things that matter and not the busyness and, and not all the, the social media and the and the hype of everything that's going on in today's society, the pressures that we brought on ourselves. How, why, how do we go back to these things? It's not a thing. It's a person. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. It's walking in Him that you might have life and have it more abundantly to be able to understand that you're yielding not to the flesh but to the Spirit and to be able to go back to the place to where when Christ is all you have, you realize that He's all you, that you need. And, and by understanding that, you're satisfied, you're content not chasing everything, not trying to make everything, fix everything, control everything. That's not what he's saying. He's able to go back to the old paths. And I wonder today, how many of you maybe could stop, testify just as me and say, that's what my heart longs for. I'll be honest, testify, not gonna give you any glory to the devil whatsoever, but within me, there's been so many different things. God has been good. But I can truly say that in my heart, my life, this, this is me. I fall guilty to that. I want, I, I want, I want to walk with the Lord. I, I, so many things and obligations and responsibilities and decisions and things that consume are not made by God. God himself is the satisfaction. He's rest. He's rest. And as the Bible says, he's peace that passes all understanding. So many times we think that rest is escape. It's not escape. This past week, as early one morning, Isaiah, I mean, I was reading in Psalms, in Psalms 55, verse number six, it says, oh, that I had wings like a dove for 
then would I fly away and be at rest. A lot of times that's how we think of rest. We think that there's a relief from a moment. There's a, an escape that's there that we can just up where we are and uproot and be able to go to a certain place and maybe we say it is vacation or I need a time away or I need a time out. And truth be told, listen, vacation, it's, it's not going to be able to change life. People come back just as miserable as everything else. We come back just as busy trying to be able to get back in a group of things. I don't care if you go to the, the beach or to the mountains, to the coast, overseas or on a cruise or whatever it may be. At the end of the day, there is no such thing as rest and vacation. It's a way to be able to go and get away, to be able to slow down, maybe in the middle of spend time if you slow down with your family. But that's not rest for your soul. Rest for your soul is only found in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not so such. So, such a thing just to be able to find wings and be able to fly and be able to get away and be able to find ourselves to be able to say, oh, everything's great now. There's a calming voice that I can hear that's different here that I can't hear anywhere else. Listen, the Bible says that Jesus is a present help in the time of need. He said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. It makes no difference where we're at the coast or if we're sitting in our home, if we're in the mountains. It makes no difference what we're facing, no matter what's going on in the news. It makes no difference what's going on in the social media, within the church, outside the church, in the walls, out the walls. It makes no difference. He's a present help in the time of need. And when he is your satisfaction, when he is your contentment, when he is your consistency, when the Lord is everything to us and we seek ye first the kingdom of God, all of the things fall in place simply because we have our priorities right. And maybe, 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 maybe that's the problem. Priority. But again, this morning, along for the very thing that he spoke of Matthew 11, he spoke to his disciple, come unto me. So how do we find this rest? Three simple principles this morning I want you to be able to see as you turn back. Turn back with me, if you will, to Matthew chapter number 11. The Bible finds herself here. Notice in verse number 28, if you will, he says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You know what I've learned about this rest? This rest is, notice, he says, I will give you rest. This rest is given. It's not something that you can take. It's not something that you can earn. It's not something that you and I deserve. That's, that's not what it is. He says, I will give you rest. And this rest is not a thing. It's not, uh, it's not in um, a church is not in a service. So many people are so anxious and worried because life has changed. And listen, I miss things as much as anybody does. But rest is not in things. It's not in a building. It's not in circumstances. That's not what it is. Rest is found in Christ and Christ alone, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. That's where we find rest. Rest is found in the Lord Jesus and it's given. It's given from Christ and Christ alone. He says here that only Jesus can give it. Who's he give it to? Notice he said, all you that labor and heavy laden. Will the Lord give me rest? That's the question. Will the Lord give me rest? All you that labor and heavy laden. Who's he talking to? He's talking to the disciples. So here as he speaks to the disciples, as he talked to them, he said, I will give you rest, all ye that labor and heavy laden. He's saying, when you're at the end of yourself, that's when I'll give it to you. Is the question today whether or not we're at the end of ourselves? Is that what the Lord's doing? I, I, I don't know. I, I'm not the Lord. His ways are not my ways. My thoughts are not his thoughts. But is that what the Lord's doing? He's teaching us all ye that labor and heavy laden and I will give you rest. So he is getting us to a place to where he's wanting us to be at the end of ourself because that's the beginning of when God works. You say, no, it's not. There's no way, Brother Jason. I, the Lord works in my life all the time. No, no, if you can do it and you can do it by, by your own understanding and your own means, you're not trusting in the Lord by faith. Now, he gives you things, but sometimes you got to get to a place where you realize that, that I, I can't do this. I'm so labored and heavy laden. I'm at the end of myself. Now, Lord, you take over. Why? Because rest is found in Jesus. And it's when we submit and we surrender to him completely that he gives us rest. If you're lost today and you don't know Jesus Christ, the personal savior, you're never going to find anything in this world. 
Never going to find peace, satisfaction, joy, salvation, or anything whatsoever unless you find it in Jesus. Jesus has come. You say, Brother Jason, I'm saved. This ain't got nothing to do for me. He's talking to the disciples. So how do you keep finding rest? Keep following. So many times we get saved and all of a sudden we think we don't need it anymore. We don't need the Lord. We've got it all figured out. And then we find ourselves running well the first year, the second year, the fifth year. And then maybe, maybe after that, we get a little bit weary. Things begin to change. Maybe it's because we got so religious or we've got so self-sufficient that maybe we don't think that we need the Lord. No, it's only found in Christ and Christ alone. So if you won't rest, he says that he will give it to you, but you got to keep following. God help us as children of God to keep following. Very rare do you ever see a restless man, a godly man. And typically, if you ever see a godly man, you don't find a restless man. Somebody who's walking with the Lord. Not only is this rest given, but also I want you to notice too in verse number 29, this rest is learned. This rest is learned. Notice what the Bible says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. It's learned. Everybody's looking for a perfect sermon, a perfect song. They're looking for a perfect situation, a a preacher, people will travel back and forth just to be able to sit under. And I understand that because there's certain men that God uses that really help me. And I understand that, but understand very well that rest is not something that's just thing. It's not a genie in a bottle. Jesus is not that way. It's not something that you just go and it's a magic eight ball. That I, Am I going to wake up with rest? That's not what it is. The Bible says, and learn of me. It's something that is learned. It's learned. We find out that it's a process something that has to be done. And most of us come to a place to where when we look at this scripture, we say, we, we want to be able to take my yoke upon it and learn, learn of what? Learn of rest. I want to learn about how, how rest. It's not what the Bible says. He said, learn of who? Me. Me. Jesus. You want rest today? Learn of the Lord. You and I want rest today? God help us to be more ambitious and, 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 and pursuing more the understanding of God and Him and His Word and His perfection and, and His love and His mercy and, and all of these things. May, may, may we have a desire to be more ambitious about that and be more burdened and, 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 and convicted for that and that we are understanding life and what's going on and what the doctor says and the world says and the news say and what everybody else says. Let us give us enough, enough attention to understand the Lord because he said, learn of me. He said, I won't rest. I won't rest. I, I want that. If I could just figure all of this stuff out and things just be so easy and settled, everything would be all right. That's not what the Bible teaches. He says, come unto me. Me. Learn of me. Learn of me. Jesus. Learn of me. The Lord says, learn of me. I want to ask you today, are you learning of the Lord? I've often been reminded, seen it, read it, books, different things, that God's greatest classrooms are not, it's not sitting in a church pew. It's in the middle of that storm. It's in the middle of that battle. It's in the middle of that, those issues that you and I face that we don't understand, that we learn of him, where we see him, we see his marvelous grace, his power, his authority. We see the way that he answers prayer, the way that he moves mountains, and sometimes when he don't move mountains, where he allows the mountain to be there and you learn of him the strength that he gives to be able to, to overcome that mountain to where we stop and we stand and we look back and we say, the Lord was my strength. Learn of me. He comes to his text and he says, but you learn of me. What does that mean? He says, learn of me how, for I am meek and lonely, lonely in heart. Meek and lonely. What's the Lord teaching us? He's teaching us the opposite of pride. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ, is what the Bible says. Why is there so many divisions, issues, problems, heartbreaks, divorces, separations, confusion, chaos? Why is there so much pride? It's all pride. Everything's pride. Why is there such separation on certain issues? People have one opinion and another opinion. It's all because of pride. There's no rest in that because we're so we're so we're, we're so consumed with trying to be right. 
We're so consumed with trying to be able to have all the answers. We're so consumed with trying to be the, the top dog, if you will, or the, the one that's in charge or has the next best thing. That's not what he's saying. He says, learn of me that, that meekness and that lowliness, to be able to come to that place where you're low. He said, take my yoke upon you. I would dare say if we're in the, in the yoke with the Lord, we learn a lot about him. We learn a lot about him. How he pivots, how he moves, steps. When we come to a certain place, you can imagine in the field, the ox, the young ox, trying to think how to be able to do one thing and move a certain way and come to a certain place and how to be able to respond or be able to move forward. But yet that ox of experience, that yoke, it's fit perfectly there. It's where you learn how to move, how to be still, how to be patient, when to dig deep, I wonder today if we're so busy trying to find rest when the Lord says, I give you rest. But this rest is not something that you're just going to go and you're going to see and you're going to have. This, this is a rest that is, that is learned. And this is what the Lord says. He said, take my yoke upon you and I'll teach you. I want to teach you. He said, I, 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 know you're, I know you're busy trying and you have good intentions and you're wore out trying. You're a child of God. God sees where you, you, you try so hard. But the Lord says, I want to teach you. Take my yoke. I'll give you a third thing. I'll close this morning. Not only do you see that this, this rest is given, It's learned. Notice in verse number 29 what the Bible says. He speaks to his disciples and he says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lonely in heart. And notice these words. And ye shall find rest for your soul. Ye shall find rest. So when you see this, you find out that it is given, it's learned, the Lord wants to teach it. But this rest is not something that God's trying to keep from us. This rest is something that the Lord is wanting to be found. He said, you shall find rest unto your souls. Now, there's nowhere in there where he says that you're not going to labor because he says all you need labor and heavy laden. He don't say anything about the load not being there. Now, everything's there. So what's different? The load's there. Life is there. Decisions are there. Problems are there. Mountains are there. Valleys are there. Storms are there. Things are there. It's going to be there. It's going to stay there. He said, but in the midst of it all, in the midst of it all, in the midst of it all, he shall find rest. I give you this verse in closing this morning. How long is it going to take? How will we know it's going to happen? Well, I know the word of God is true. But the time I don't know. But I do know that there's a principle that the Lord teaches us and he tells us in Galatians chapter number six and listen to it. And be not weary in well-doing. Listen to this. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. All I can tell you is to continue to be faithful in what the Lord has told you to do. Brother Mark Stroud, one time I was talking to him about some different things. And Brother Mark Shroud always uses the illustration about the general. Do you know any different? You just go on the last orders that you've been told. If you're a child of God today, 
you're trying to find answers and understanding, I encourage you just to continue to be faithful in what the Lord's told you to do. And as you learn of him, you'll find rest. No matter what you face, you'll be faithful. God will not forsake. May God bless you. Father, I love you. I thank you for the word of God. Father, I pray that you'd use your word today to be able to help us, Lord, to be able to find that rest. May we understand, God, it's not some secret. It's not something, God, that it's in, in darkness, Lord. This is something that, Lord, you desire for your children. And Father, I pray that today that, that we would look unto you. Oh, Lord, I love you, and I thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for being in control. In Jesus' name, amen.